Jeez, that was quick. There we go, we're in. Yeah, we're in. What an absolute result that was then. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're in. What an awesome session this has turned out to be. Welcome to a new video. I am back on the bank. Can you join me on a gorgeous, absolute stunning local reservoir? This place is such a lovely water. And because it hasn't got any monsters in it, it doesn't get a lot of attention. I've come up for an evening session and I've got the lake to myself. And if I pan around the lake, you'll see what I mean. It is absolutely stunning and a lovely place to spend an evening. Now I've already got a net set up. I've um, been feeding a little bit of bread in and I'm going to see if I can nick one off the top really quickly. I think there's a good chance there's been a few fish showing a bit of interest. I think I've gotten quite confident on the bread and I'm going to just freeline a piece of bread and see if I can nick one nice and quick. So I'm going to get a stem, uh, the camera set up on the tripod behind the swim, see if we can get all the action on camera and let's see if we can get one nice and quick. Let's have it. Let's see if we can have one. Let's start up straight away. Fish is out to the left at the moment, I think. Yeah, it's a bit further right. I've cast it a bit too short. That, that side wind is, is properly sort of pushing it along. There's a couple of them out there. They're competing. Every time they find one, there seems to be... There seems to be a couple and they seem to be competing for it. So let's see if they drift in on that, in that piece. Oh, jeez, that was quick. There we go, we're in. Oh, happy days. Hopefully that was on camera. What a wicked bite that was. Just said hopefully they're drifting and uh, he did. <laughs> I ain't been here that long. That's what we got in common. Oh, I love that. I've literally just been feeding that for about 10 or 15 minutes. Just had a few pieces of bread. <laughs> and that fish has literally just been coming up, nailing them. There's been a couple of them there. They've just been coming up, nailing that bread, dropping down, moving along, nailing the next one. Just got them nice and confident. No one else on the lake today. Fishing is lovely mature reservoir and it is a lovely sort of mature overgrown reservoir lovely trees around it and uh looks like we got ourselves a fish oh he's in the net cool what result that was that was quick get in there five minutes in the right place got myself a common off the top happy days Let's let him go home. I'm not going to get him out. He's only about seven or eight pound. So let's let him have his freedom. There he goes. 
What an absolute result that was then. That was a quick bite, wasn't it? Um, yeah, literally was in the water for about two or three minutes at the most and the fish nailed it. Like I said, I got them feeling quite confident um, for about 10 or 15 minutes on that bread and they were just absolutely Pac-Man in it, to be honest. Now, I had spooked most of the fish having that bite and it was only a, a seven or eight pound common, but lovely to get a quick bite using light tackle, eight pound line, 2.25 pound test curve rod, um, eight foot rod. So nice and soft, nice and fun and um, yeah wicked fun to uh, have a quick bite so the tactics really for the rest of the session are going to be to again try and get a few off the top and if um, they don't show much interest I'm going to put a bit of bait in some of the marginal areas around the lake because there's no one out here and I'm going to just walk around drop a few rods in on that bait and see if um, anyone's uh, at home really so yeah nice and simple tactics today very fun fishing so hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it i've only got about three hours of fishing up until dark but plenty of time to get a few bites and they seem really active in this nice warm weather today so let's crack on let's get that rod back out there see if we can get another one so what i do is i just drop it in the margin get it a little bit wet makes it a little bit heavier gives you a little bit of extra casting weight when you're free lining um, with bread because obviously the bread absorbs the water the downside to it oh go on have it have it that looked like a slightly better fish that one that like a nice mirror see if it come back yeah the downside to, to dampening the bread is obviously it, it, it comes off a lot quicker because you're already sort of starting that breakdown process of the water getting to the bread so although it allows you to cast it further it doesn't last as long whereas if you flick it out fresh without dipping it it will last a lot longer now it's getting attacked by a load of roach so the chances are the hook's probably falling out the float of fish inside the session isn't really isn't really turning into much at the moment i've had that one fish really quickly and then that seems to be Yeah, but that one fish really quickly, that seems to be all that's happening. So I'm going to just do one more cast. I'm going to chuck this out in the, in the middle just to see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's just going to get mobbed by, by the roach. But we'll see, you never know. As I can't see them, I'm, I'm thinking they're probably further out, any carp that were around. So that's why I've chucked it out further. Oh, so much showed interest in it straight away then. There's a bit of bread in, in close along here. Normally, the better carp on this lake do sort of come in really close, just mopping bait up. That's sort of just come up, uh, sort of been pushed in by the breeze. So I expect to see the odd better one showing a bit of interest in some of this floating bread in close but at the moment I've not actually seen um not actually seen anything I'm gonna put some of this bread in and just see if any cart come up this is going to give me an indication if there's anything around and if it just gets mobbed by roach and bream then I am gonna switch to the bottom I think Except defeat now on the top. Well, I say defeat. I did have one. Right, is that a carp? Don't feel like it. No, it's a bream. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't. I didn't even see that bite then. That I just seen that it disappeared and thought, well, something's probably got it. And uh, yeah, we got ourselves a bream. But there's a lot of them out there. Wow, I'm amazed there weren't many fish up on the top. Very, very surprised. Might have to switch to the bottom.
I've moved round from where I started initially trying to get them on the top. The fish just seemed to drift off. I think having caught that, that common, um, I think it pushed a lot of the carp out of the area. The wind's also pushing down to the other end of the lake. So I'm thinking maybe the fish has just drifted away. So there was a lot of bream and roach around there, but not any carp anymore, I don't think. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna try on the bottom. So I've obviously put a little bit of bait in a couple of swims, well, three swims, and um, I'm just gonna lower in a rig and just fish for 20 minutes maybe. Um, this first spot, I'm only gonna put one rod out because I only put some bait in just to the right of the, of the um, of right hand side of the swim in the margin. So I'm just gonna lower this in. I'm just using a really simple little Ronnie, nice and simple, don't need anything complicated on here. To be fair, I've got so much confidence in a Ronnie rig, like a lot of people have. It's a very effective presentation and I'm using a match the hatch um, 12 miller there, which I'm just gonna lower in onto the, um, the bait and just slacking it off and see if um, we can get a bite on that. So yeah, that's the next plan of attack. So I'm gonna give it about 20 minutes in here. If I don't get a bite, I'm gonna move on and try one of the other swim. So let's uh, get it in position and see if it produces the goods. Come on carp. Right, well, I've just lowered that rod in. It's about two or three foot, so it is quite shallow, but I have caught from along here before, so I'm pretty confident there's a chance of a bite, but hopefully that bait will do the goods and it's brought a few fish in. If not, obviously I've got a couple of other spots primed, so we'll try them if, um, if this one doesn't pay off. But um, yeah, it's such a lovely place up here. I absolutely love it. I will say actually, before I talk any more, if it, there's a bit of wind noise, it's because I've forgotten the muffler for the mic, which is a bit of a rookie error for me. Don't normally forget that sort of thing, but it was a bit of a rush session. So um, I ended up forgetting that and left it um, in the barrow. But um, I actually, last minute, come out tonight. Um, basically, I was sorting the lad out and um, I said to the missus, oh, I might pop out for a few hours. And she was like, yeah, okay, go for it. So I sort of got him ready for bed and then um, shot off while she was reading the story. So um, I quite literally just shut the kit in the van. Luckily, I had a, I've got a bit of a like sort of short session, day session bag loaded up to go. So I just chucked a few extra bits in, lobbed it in the van, but unfortunately left a few of the um, essentials for the camera in the uh, barrow from uh, obviously previous sessions. But it is what it is. It still works. It just might get a little bit of wind noise um, as it sort of picks up and gets a bit more blustery. But anyway, doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but yeah, this is such a lovely place. You might be able to hear the um, the sheep. That's literally all you can hear, the sheep and the wind blowing in the trees. There's no other anglers on here. Lovely old English countryside, lovely big old trees. I absolutely love it up here. As I'm sure you can probably tell, it's, it's a stunning bit of water. It's only about three acres, little reservoir, sort of um, just in between a couple of farms. And um, it's only about 10 minutes from my house, maybe 15 minutes or so at the most. But yeah, absolute lovely place. And yeah, I got it to myself, so I can't complain. But anyway, I'm gonna leave that rod out for a bit longer and um, see if it goes. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll have another one to show you shortly. Right, well, swim number one 
didn't produce the goods. I ended up staying in there a little bit longer. I think I was actually in there for more like half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes. And um, yeah, as I was only using one rod, I, um, I thought didn't feel like it was gonna happen. Didn't see any signs of fish there. And um, where it's so shallow, to be honest, I expected to see a bit of water movement, possibly a odd tail pattern, or even a bit of fizzing or something like that. But yeah, didn't really see anything. So I don't think the fish were really there. I had a look at the, the second spot. I stood there for quite a while, probably at least five minutes, maybe even 10 minutes, just to see if anything rolled or showed, or again, just a sign of maybe a fish being there. And again, didn't really see any movement. But the third swim, um, which I'm in now, um, there's definitely been a bit of fizzing going on. So I've been stood in the air for a little bit and there's definitely some signs of fizzing on the right hand side. So um, I'm feeling a little bit more confident that there might be a few fish up along here. Now it could be bream. Um, there are some tension there as well, um, but it definitely looks, it looks better. So what I'm gonna do, because I baited right and left side of this swim, I can obviously put two rods out on some bait. So that's what I'm gonna do for the last bit of the session now. The light is starting to go a bit now. So um, I've probably got about maybe 45 minutes of fishing, I think, before it's probably gonna be um, dark to the point where I probably should be going home. So I'm gonna drop the rods in, get the rods out nice and quick. I'm gonna fish a pop-up Ronnie on one of them. I'm gonna fish a bottom bait Ronnie on the other. Um, same rigs basically, just slightly different setup to counter for the um, pop-up and, and the bottom baits. Um, nick a little mesh bag, I think as well, with pellet on them, drop them in on the spots and um, yeah, see if we can get one. I might put a little bit of extra bait over them as well, because I'm gonna basically stay in there until I, till I have to go. So anyway, let's get it done, and let's see if we can actually catch another one, because it'd be nice to get another one, because I've only had the one so far, I missed a few opportunities, and I kind of felt like I was gonna get a few more bites, to be honest. So anyway, let's get it done, let's get the rods fishing, see if we can make it happen again. I'm gonna just drop this one out towards where that bait went in much much deeper along here so that's a, a good start already I'm going to flick this one out obviously I put the bait in nice and close so I don't need to fish out far could probably do with smaller leads really because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a splosh putting out a uh, a three ounce lead that close in but that's what I had in the van, so that's what, what went in the bag. Anyway, there we go. That's uh, those two rods out. So, now it's just a case of seeing if anything's out. Got one just down to the right down here, where I put that bait in earlier. And I've got one just down to the left down here, where I put the bait. So, yeah, both in quite close, but there's definitely a few fish sort of showing. And there's a bit of fizzing been going on, so it looks pretty good for it at the moment. So fingers crossed, they want to play ball. And we'll have something for the camera shortly, but I reckon I've only got about half hour of light at the moment. It light seems to be going very quickly, so we'll see. You can only fish up till dark on here, so um, hopefully we'll have a bite before it gets dark. But we'll see what happens. So yes, fingers are crossed. Rods, it is over to you. And carp, it's over to you as well, so let's play ball. The viewers want to see a fish. Come on. That'll be a bite then. Go on. That didn't take too long. Clearly that bait did its job. And there were a few fish up here. I thought it looked like there were some fish showing around, so. Awesome. This one's on the uh, pop-up. On the bug, match the hatch pop-up. Basically just a 12 mil pop-up which matches the um, 12 mil freebies I've been feeding. So it's been a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be today. I thought there might have been a few more bites on the cards, but the fish have definitely 
not been sort of on it big time. I mean, I probably shouldn't have fished that first spot. It's probably a little bit too shallow. I didn't really see anything along there. As soon as I come along here, I could see there was a bit of activity. There were clearly a, a few fish around and I'm um, feeding on that bait. Oh, it's a lovely scaly one. Ooh, he's wallowing for the net already. Ah, lovely. Mission complete. One off the top, one off the bottom. Well, there we go. They're not a big fish, but lovely scaly one and a bite off the bottom. So one off the top, one off the bottom. Well happy with that. And I might be the end of the session now. I might just flick it out for um, another sort of 10 minutes, just in case. But um, yeah, happy days. So uh, tactics worked. Took a little bit of time to get it on the bottom, but on a short session, one off the top and one off the bottom, it's pretty good going. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, we we'll slipped this guy back and you never know, we might have another one before we have to shoot off, but we haven't got very long. Cheers, mate. You can go home. Off he goes. I've come up for another evening. So I was here yesterday, which we've already seen. And to be fair, the light levels on the evening were terrible. And because the bank I was fishing on is really overgrown, I think a lot of the footage was really dark and um, didn't really look very good. So I might have used it, I might not have, but I thought I'd come back and have another little go and just do a few hours this evening. So I'm actually in the same area as I was um, when I started off, just on the dam, just feeding a little bit of bread on the top. There's a couple of fish showing a bit of interest but not many. It's actually sunnier and warmer today and there's no wind. So I thought it would have been better on the surface, but they don't seem to be having it at the moment. So um, I might have to switch to the bottom if, um, if this doesn't work, but there's a chance of maybe one. So I'm gonna quickly um, get the rod sorted out, get a net set up and we'll see if we can nick one off the top nice and quickly. And then maybe look at getting a couple of rods out on the bottom for the last couple of hours up until dark. So let's see how we get on. Obviously we had two yesterday. Hopefully we can get one or two today. But yeah, nice bit of enjoyable fishing. Let's see if we make it happen. But I just caught that stunning, perfect little koi carp. That is absolutely beautiful. All right, I just had that little koi and there's been, there's a one mirror and one common that have shown a little bit of interest to some of the bread. They've been sort of in the weed over to my right, but the mirror just come and tried taking that piece of bread off the top, but it spooked. I don't know if it saw me or it's just very cagey regardless, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely weren't too sure about something. Yeah, we're in. Ooh, it's woken up now. Literally saw him come up, flip the bread on it, moved it into position, just on the edge of the weed, and uh, he comes straight up and at it. It's funny actually, because the fish, a bit further out, actually ignored it, as it was in an area which was a little bit obvious. And as soon as I moved it closer to the weed, the fish clearly felt more confident to take it. It's a different fish, so it just might have been the mannerism of that fish just felt more happy to pick it up. But it just shows, even if you were fishing a bait on the bottom, that actually repositioning it sometimes can actually get a bite just because it's in a different position. I think sometimes it can land in a certain way or on a certain area, they're not happy to take it, and you move it to a slightly different spot and, and they take it. It's, it's just a confidence thing, I think, what they're happy to, to try and take. Could be the line angle, could be anything. You know, maybe that fish thought where it was sat on the, in between two bits of weed, there was little chance of any danger there. Whereas uh, 
Turns out, it had my hook in it. It's one thing I love about floater fishing. You can um, you can watch the way that they feed, the way that they react and respond, which um, you can't really do on the bottom. The bottom is a little bit of a gamble. I am literally going to just unhook this in the net when I get it in. I'm not going to lift it out and, and have a look at it. They're only small fish. I'm not going to put them through that, the trouble of uh, being lifted out of the water because obviously it's, it's a warm day. It's a lovely fish. Oh, I've got my phone in my pocket so I need to be a bit careful. Oh, I've completely just missed the net. Oh, what an idiot. The net was wrapped around the front so I was trying to lift it up and I uh, completely missed the net. This rod's though, nice though, two and, a, two and a quarter. Eight foot, two and a quarter. It's a wicked little uh, stalking rod. Here we go. Ah, sorted. One, possibly two carp under this tree. Absolutely nailing the bread and mixers that are currently floating underneath it. It obviously feels safe where it's got the cover of the tree. Uh, this is basically what I call heron stalking. And you're, uh, yeah, there's a carp. You're basically just lowering, lowering a bait onto their noses. So what I do is I take off, take off a decent length. Yeah, see the bream there as well. Oh, that's a nice carp. Not really common. What I can do is basically I'm holding a line off the water and if that bream comes along I'm basically going to lift it out of the way. Here we go. Oh, I pulled out his face. I don't think he spooked though. <laughs> what well, I've got to be careful of is the bream. Oh, that was a bream. <laughs> I just lifted that out in time. Oh, there's literally a squadron of bream down there. Oh my god, this fish is powerful. Oh. oh, yes. Well, you might not have seen what I did there, but I basically gave that fish slack line to make it think that it was, it had got away with it. And by doing that, it basically swam out of the cover. It's risky, because obviously with barbless hooks, they can easily slip the hook. But, oh my god, it's not even a very big fish. It's a little common. <laughs> Fair play, mate. That fish has put up an absolute account for itself. Fair play to him. So this is a swim that I fished 
yesterday evening and um, I had a fish fishing on the bottom just at the um, end of the day or at the end of the session just fishing out to the right there and it is a good it is a good area there he is, little common just slipping back ah, that was good fun right, well, I've had three fish off the top now and um, it's been good fun missed a couple of opportunities I've been filming it all on the GoPro um, a lot of it's been sort of heron stalking right in the edge uh, just trying to drop it on the noses and it's been really enjoyable and I've been doing that for probably the past hour um, and the last sort of hour what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick out the two rods on the bottom I've just put in a few handfuls of pellet and boily and I'm basically going to just um, lower in two rods like I did yesterday evening uh, but a little bit earlier than what I did yesterday um, the light was going already I think when I was sort of lowering the rods in yesterday evening so I'm doing it a little bit earlier so hopefully there's a chance of getting a couple of bites off the bottom before it gets dark and I'll be able to get them on film so anyway that is the plan so let's get the rods out flick them out onto the spots and see if we can get some off the bottom right so I'm going to get the bottom bait rods out so yesterday I had a Ronnie on a pop-up on the right rod and I had a bottom bait on the left rod but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put a bottom bait on the right and a pop-up on the left, see if it makes any difference. So this is a Ronnie bottom bait. I've got a double 12 mil on there. And um, I just basically mount it on a little hair, which comes off a little ring, which runs up and down on the hook. And that makes the hook really heavy and helps it turn so that it absolutely nails the fish. So looks pretty good it also means i can change between a pop-up on a ronnie with the same rig is why i've started to use this because it is um it's a really nice adaptable rig um it's also really good on my syndicate which has got a load of crayfish because it's a bit of an anti-crayfish rig as well anyway i'm going to flick it out there's a bit of bubbling coming up already but i'm going to flick it long bring it back Lower it onto the spot. Get that line down. Nice, that's that one out. Rod number two then, as I said, is gonna be a Ronnie. I've decided to go with a washed out half tone bug pop up on this one. Yesterday evening I was using the match the hatch. Thought I'd go for a bit of color today. See if it makes any difference, who knows? To be fair, the match the hatch had a bite on it yesterday, but I like mixing things up now and then, so we'll flick this one out. Just flick it out a bit beyond the spot. And drop it down nice and soft. Take the line. Slacking it all off. There we go then, we've got the two rods out on the bottom. See if anything happens. Well, I have literally just put that out and it is away already. I quite literally just did a video saying the two rods are out, turned the GoPro off, walked behind the switch off the uh, SLR and it's absolutely ripped off. <laughs> oh dear. So that's the bottom bait rod. Well, that's an absolute disaster. He's going to wrap himself around that rod now. Well, that's kind of turned into an absolute disaster, hasn't it? Why well, I don't like using slack lines. I think I won't be having them slack now. Oh, God. What a mess. All right, well, I've rolled in the other rod. Um, he's just a little mirror. I'm literally going to let him go. A lot of these fish I'm not getting out because they're just so small. It's, it's not really worth it and to be fair they're so lively right there we go but well, that is fish number four right there we go then fish number two off the bottom again on the right hand rod on the bottom bait lovely scaly fish quite a cool one that a little bit bigger than the last one i think so i thought i'd actually get them out for the camera for a change 
But yeah, nice one. I'm going to slip it back. You never know, might have time for another one. Right, rod's back out, it's got a few uh, freebies on it. What an awesome session this has turned out to be. So um, yeah, I've had another one off the bottom. I know they're small fish, but it's such good fun. And to be fair, they're putting up a wicked fight. They're really scrapping and um, it's really enjoyable. And because I've got the softer rods with me, they're only 2.75 pound test curves, the ones for the bottom baits. And the one for the floater was um, 2.25. So softish kind of gear really um, it does make it really enjoyable and um, that's what it's about you know you can have plenty of fun with smaller fish if you use balanced tackle so just a little bit of a uh, something to think about there but um, hopefully you like this style of video it's a little bit more vloggy instead of the um, sort of more cinematic style that we normally do and I just fancied doing something a little bit more vloggy for a change I knew I was going to be doing a short session yesterday didn't even think I'd be coming out today so I basically just thought I'd combine the two sessions together and kind of film it in a vlog style instead of spending time trying to get loads of cool sort of cinematic trying to capture that atmosphere I thought I'd try and capture the action and do it more sort of first person style with a GoPro and also just doing some updates on the SLR like I am now. Now the wireless mic has run out of battery so hopefully the shotgun can, uh, shotgun mic I've got on top at the moment is doing the job. I've not used it for a long time. Hopefully it still works. I guess if there's no audio right now then um, it doesn't. But um, yeah it's been enjoyable. I think I'm on, is that five I think I've had now? Um, for a few hours fishing so really enjoyable um, the sun is starting to go now the light is going to be going I think within the next maybe half an hour and then I'm going to be calling it quits and going home but it's been enjoyable to get out I had a couple of fish yesterday I've had five now today so seven fish on a couple of short sessions it's pretty decent going for me so I'm happy with that anyway hopefully we'll have another one to round off the session hopefully it'll be a bigger one because they've been pretty small fish um, be nice to get a double. Uh, I haven't had a double out of here on the last couple of evenings, so it would be nice to get a double. There used to be a nice head of doubles in here and the old 20 pounder, so I don't know if they're around anymore, but who knows? Maybe we'll catch one for this video. Anyway, I'm gonna have a little bit to eat now. I'm gonna sit down and have a bit to eat. I've got a couple of wraps with me, and um, you never know, the rod might go running off again, but it's been fun if it doesn't. So, happy days. Well, it's safe to say those fish are well and truly on that bait. It's funny how I thought fishing on the top was going to be the better, better option today because of the weather. But to be honest, going off, going off with... Oh, he's come off. Oh, oh I hadn't lost the fish for ages. I changed that hook as well, put a fresh hook on. It's the first fish I've lost on that rig. Hardly ever lose a fish on these rigs. Very, very surprised. What I was saying though is um, yesterday and today I thought fishing on the top would be better because of the weather conditions. But actually, to be fair, yesterday I kind of thought to myself we didn't have that many options on the top and I obviously fished on the bottom and had a fish at the end. Whereas today, and that's my third bite off of that same spot, and clearly the fish really on that bait. I've not had anything on the left rod, so I might actually move the left rod out onto that area and just have two on there, because that seems to be where the fish are, and they're happy feeding. 
It's a shame I've just lost one on it, but um, I think it was quite a small one and it was just sort of darting around it. I thought it dropped off already and then it sort of shot down the bank. And I think that changed angle probably allowed it to slip the hook. It's, it's barbless hooks on here, so it's a lot easier for them to come off. But um, anyway, we'll get it uh, rigged up again with a fresh bait. Flick it out there. And actually, I'm going to redo that one and put that out there as well and have two on that spot. Right, place your bets then. I've got both out on that area. Which one's going to go? Is it going to be the right rod, which I've obviously had the bites on, or is the left rod that I've just moved out there, is that going to go first? I got a feeling I'm probably going to get another bite, so I've obviously been getting a bit of action. I'm going to put another handful of boilies over the top of it. Which rod's going to go first? Let me know in the comments now before I get the bite. If you guess right rod, you're a winner. What a love in the bottom bait. Right, I don't know how well you can see me because the light levels are starting to go, but I'm going to unhook him in the net and let him go. I'm not going to bother messing him around. He's only a little one. But yeah, fish number... Oh, fish number six, huh? Right, that is the end of the session. I've had to put the camera light on to be able to film this as it has got um, a dark now. I can still see to um, pack away without a torch, but I have got the torch on just to check the area before I go. But um, that is definitely time to call it quits and it's time to head home. So unfortunately the rods didn't go off again, but I think I've had six fish this evening. I had two yesterday, so I'm really happy with that. Nice couple of short sessions, doing about maybe three hours fishing, I think it's been um, tonight, and I think three yesterday or thereabouts. So maybe six, six to seven hours fishing over a couple of evenings, and I've had, um, I think, eight fish. So I'm happy with that, nothing big, but good fun, managed to get some bites on film as well, which is always cool to see. So I've enjoyed it. Anyway, hopefully you've liked the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up as always. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Remember, we do run a monthly giveaway for our subscribers and you just need to be entered, or sorry, you just need to be subscribed and then an answer the question normally when we have a um, giveaway within one of the videos. There probably will be one, I would imagine, in the next video. I might have, I should have probably done one this time around, but I completely forgot. So you have to wait till next week. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, get on the bank, be lucky, um, enjoy your fishing, and I'll see you next week on Tuesday at half past six for another weekly upload. See you then.